better daily. When we work hard in our minds, bodies, and our spirits to become 1% better every single day. Download the app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live to catch the video version of these podcasts. Here's your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What is up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. You can call me coach because today is Flex Friday. And on Flex Friday, I usually go through a movement pattern or exercise practice to help you on your 1% better journey. And today, we are following up on a workshop that we did for the Better Man Challenge. And this week, we covered strength. And so the men in the Better Man Challenge are dedicated this week to incorporating resistance training into their weekly schedule, but also if they've already been doing it, they're dedicated to progressing that high personally. I'm pretty sore. I hit a pretty hard back workout yesterday and up the ante on myself to lead by example. So man, I'm feeling it. But today I'm gonna go through some basic movement patterns. So one of the things that I, I told the men for strength training this week was that all of our movements for resistance training can really be boiled down to the six basic movement patterns that human beings should be able to perform well without pain as long as you have all of your limbs. And if you don't, I'm sorry, but but that doesn't mean you still can't exercise. So we're going to do the, the six basic movement patterns with some dumbbells today. I've got these. You don't need dumbbells. You can do uh, body weight. If you're a barbell person, that's great. But the, the point is most exercises actually stem out of this, most compound exercises. Now, there's a few isolation exercises. That means you're really focusing on a, a very small muscle group to hit it a little harder, like bicep curls, for instance, or tricep extensions or lateral raises. We don't call those basic movement patterns. That's what we call accessory work. And so that said, let's get into each one of these movement patterns. And I might have to move the camera around a little bit so you can see it and that will be okay. Good morning, Robin. Good to see you this morning. So the basic movement patterns, if you're a writing person, you can write this down. They are squat, lunge, bend. Those are generally lower body, squat, lunge, and bend. And then we have push, pull, and twist. Push, pull, and twist. Those are all upper body. And so I'm going to perform the upper body and then we'll go with the lower body. So let's start with push. Push is the easiest thing to do without much equipment. So things like push-ups, overhead presses, chest presses, right? So this is a good example. I'm in a kneeling position. This is a good example of a push exercise. So just an overhead shoulder press like this. And then if you're laying on the ground, you can do some floor presses. Don't do that while sitting up. That's not that's work the same muscles, right? Push exercises generally work the pectoral muscles and the shoulder muscles and the tricep muscles. Most, most pushing exercises really target those muscle groups. And so that's movement pattern one, pushes. Now there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, variations of push-ups, declines and inclines. And, and there's a, so I showed you a standard shoulder press, right? And then there's the Arnold shoulder press. I don't know if it makes any, makes my shoulders look any more like Arnold or not but that's the, <laughs> the rotation at the bottom, right? There are variations of these exercises all across the board. What's important is that we learn how to train those muscles appropriately, use the right ones, and perform the exercise without pain. So that's push. Now we've got pull. Pull is actually the hardest exercise to do with minimal equipment, and that is because you have to be able to pull against something, right? Now with dumbbells, there's a few pretty standard and powerful exercises that I've done uh, right here in Better Daily. And so this is one of my personal favorites, the bent over row, right? So this is forward. You have to start from a standing position, drop your hips back, keep your chest up nice and tall, come as close as you can to parallel, don't, don't let your back go like this, and then pull like this. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you, keep everything nice and strong and rigid, Perform the exercise with control. That is a pulling exercise. Another variation of a pulling exercise is a split stance. So I've got my, my foot in front of me here, my foot behind me here. I've got one arm down, and this is called a single arm row, right? This is another pulling exercise. 
Pulling exercises also include things like pull-ups or inverted rows. Uh, so very, very excellent exercise set. The pulling movement pattern generally works those back muscles, so the lats that go from all the way down at the bottom of your back all the way to the back of your arm. That's that muscle group. We've got our trapezius muscles. These are the ones up here and they down here. They form a kite across your back. We've got our rhomboids, which is right in the middle of your shoulder blade there. We've got our rear delts and we've got our subscaps and all the awesome muscles that make up our back. So pulling exercises, movement pattern two. Number three is a twist. In a twist, is a difficult exercise to do well, and so a lot of people overdo this. They try to do too much weight, they try to make too much movement, they use too much of their shoulders, but twisting really helps the core musculature and stabilizes the spine so it doesn't rotate poorly. And so I've shown you things like a plank walkthrough or even that single, single arm row that I did when you're fighting rotation, you're not, you're not doing this number, you're staying nice and stable and not rotating, that works the obliques too. But a good twisting exercise is like a chop. So I'm gonna start low here, and I'm gonna come up across the body. I'm in a kneeling position. I'm gonna come up across the body like this, and then back down nice and easy. Up across the body like this, back down nice and easy. I'm gonna adjust this camera so you can see that kneeling just a bit better. So I'm in a kneeling position here, I'm coming down and then across the body like this, down and across the body like this. So this is what it might look like from the side, just like that. Twisting is important because what it does is it teaches our body to keep our spine from rotating too much. And that will support our lower back when we're doing things like running or cycling and, or even walking and creating that stabilizing force around your spine through weight training is very important. You don't need to overdo it, don't go heavy, don't do lots and lots of reps. The goal is not to anger your back, it's to develop the musculature. Now we get to the lower body stuff. The lower body stuff, I, I think the names are self-explanatory, but I still think it's worth going through them. So we're gonna start with the squat. The squat is basically sitting down and standing up. That's what it is. Everybody squats. Every time you sit down into a chair, every time you go to the bathroom, you perform a squatting exercise. There's a bunch of different variations of a squat you can do with a dumbbell. You can go body weight first, sit back into that invisible chair, let your hips come down, keep your feet nice and flat, press strong through the legs, and then stand it back up. My, my body's not coming up on my toes, right? I'm staying nice and flat in my feet, right? Now, if you're ready to add weight, you can add it a number of ways. I like to hold a dumbbell like this, put my hands up under it, get my elbows down to my knees like that. It's a really good way to weigh a squat, right? You can get more creative, do the goblet. Goblet's down here. You can't go quite as deep that way, but that works out really well. Or if you want to get really crazy, you can add a pushing exercise to your squatting exercise, and that is called a thruster. Thrusters look like this. I've got it here. Squat, press, boom, straight up overhead. Boom, straight up overhead. So there's a lot of different variations of the squat. Things like jump squats are variations of the squat. Things like barbell squats are variations of the squat. There's even pistol squats, which are single leg squatting exercises. And so, as you can see, squat movement pattern is very prevalent. It hits every muscle in the lower body. Hamstrings, quads, glutes, calves. It's a little more quad heavy than the other two exercises or movement patterns that I'm gonna show you. So those are squats. Then we have the bend movement pattern. The bend movement pattern is primarily responsible for hitting those glutes and hamstrings. Most of the exercises that fall into this category are like deadlifts. And so I'm gonna show you a dumbbell deadlift, two variations. So first, We've got our compound deadlift, or, or you could call it your normal deadlift. Your, your weights are in front of you, you're just like this. You dip those hips back. It's just like picking up some groceries off the ground. And then stand it straight up, squeeze your butt behind you, keep your weight in your heels. If you're a beginner, if you're more advanced than that, you're using more weight. Just like this. Notice my back stays nice and straight. My back stays nice and straight. My back's neutral is what we say here. Okay, so that's a bend. 
And then a variation of the deadlift here is I straighten my legs out and I come down so I don't bend my knees so much. This is a little harder on the back. You might need lighter weight, right? But <clears throat> if your legs are straight, you're hitting your hamstrings. Those are the muscles behind your leg. If your legs are bending during your deadlift, you're hitting your glutes more rather than those hamstrings. So that's the bend exercise. Very, very important to train the bend exercise because that's how we pick things up. And if you're picking things up poorly in the weight room, then I promise you, you're picking things up poorly in life. So bending down to tie your shoe, picking up groceries off the ground, lifting up the couch so somebody can vacuum under it, that sort of thing. If you're not deadlifting in the gym setting, then you're going to have a really hard time keeping your back nice and stable and using your legs to lift in your deadlift in your daily life. So that's the bend exercise, very powerful exercise, hits those glutes. And then also, uh, fun fact, is a very intense core exercise as well. Last but not least is the lunge. I find this seems to be everybody's least favorite exercise, but lunging is an amazing movement pattern because it teaches the body how to deal with two different planes at the same time, right? So the front leg is doing a different job than the back leg. The lunge looks like this. We're gonna split our legs up, one forward, one back. We're up on this back toe. We're flat on the front. We're going straight down and straight up, like that. Straight down, straight up. Not forward, straight. <laughs> Just like that. Good. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can change that with dumbbells. You can hold a dumbbell in one hand, which really makes you imbalanced and requires some work from your core. You can hold dumbbells up here on your, on your shoulders in order to weight that exercise. You can hold them down at your sides and travel with it. That means you're walking forward, doing one lunge on each leg at the same time. Lots and lots of variations of the lunge exercise. And so there you have it. Those are the six basic movement patterns. These make up just about every compound movement that you can perform in resistance training. Like I said, there's things like bicep curls ugh, that are worth doing, but they don't classify as a basic movement pattern. They're what we call accessories, training things like our biceps to do good work and to move the elbow joint well, but those aren't basic movement patterns. So I'd love to know what basic movement patterns are you doing in your workouts right now? And what exercises are your favorite for each one of those? I'll tell you mine if you'll tell me yours. This has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. I'm really looking forward to next week's Mindset Monday. And you should know that today marks the 100th episode of the Better Daily Shortcast. Now we're always about eight weeks ahead here in the Better Daily application, so this is probably more like episode 120, but but we are at episode 100 in the, the public sphere and publication. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for subscribing and, and reviewing the Shortcast. It's awesome, and I really appreciate you guys very much. So this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Until next time, guys, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% Better today. Don't forget to subscribe for the podcast. Leave us a raving review to tell others how Better Daily has helped you in your journey. If you want more Better Daily, download our app. And join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live. Use code POD to get 25% off your subscription. That's P-O-D, all caps, to save 25% on your subscription. We all have a cross to carry. It's later when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.